Hi and welcome to today's show. I have a book review for you today. It's a biography, The Dead Are Arising, The Life of Malcolm X, A Leader in Racial Equality. Now the show is brought to you today by a free training, the Structure Success Video Training. And you can get your hands on this freebie at the end of the show or have more details. But essentially it helps you come up with a rough outline for your project. And you could be writing an autobiography, could be a memoir or a biography or something else. So stay with me to the end of the show to find out more details. If you are brand new to Forever Young Autobiographies, a big hello is where we learn to write life stories for family and friends so that unique memories can live on for future generations. The Dead Are Arising, it's been written by Les Payne and Tamara Payne. And it's not just a life story, it's really a history lesson. The book came out in 2020, it's published by W.W. W. Norton and Company. And it's really about all these interviews that Les has put together, over hundreds of hours of interviews. And it creates this portrait of what, you know, probably arguably could be the 20th century's politically relevant figures, one of the most politically relevant figures. Now, Les is a Pulitzer winning journalist and he started this project in 1990. So it's been a mammoth effort. He brought on his daughter, Tamara, as a research assistant. And when Les un uh, unfortunately died in 2018, it was Tamara who completed the book. So a very heroic effort for her. Now the book's been published and it's been picking up a number of awards. So in 2020, it was awarded the National Book Awards for winner for nonfiction. And in 2021, it's won the Pulitzer Prize for biography. So it's an amazing book. And I'm going to share a little bit about it with you today. But this show is a summary of a full article I have about it over at my website. Go to foreveryoungautobiographies.com slash the dead are arising. So to start out, what is this book about? Well, it begins when, before Malcolm is born, it's his mother Louise is at home, she's heavily pregnant, and she's visited late at night when her husband is not home by the KKK. And Louise is no pushover. She, she um, stands up quite well to the KKK and they leave, but this event is enough to motivate the family to migrate north. And they move to a few different cities unfortunately encountering racial, violent racial um, things happen to them and they, they come into the Great Depression and they experience great poverty. And this especially so when Malcolm's father Earl is killed in a streetcar accident. So unfortunately Malcolm by the time he's in his teens he's skipping a lot of school, he's selling drugs on the street and then as he gets older, he moves to Harlem where he associates with pimps. He's running numbers, as they say, with the mob. And he even leads a burglary team. So eventually he ends up in prison and it's here that he does some soul searching and he converts to Islam. And he does his time in prison and he comes out as a nation of Islam minister. So. He amasses quite a lot of, of followers, of parishioners, I suppose. Uh, he opens temples for Nation of Islam. And he gets to be really well known across the country. But then he sort of exits from the Nation of Islam for, he, he wants to, he pursues a more mainstream version of Islam. He wants to travel overseas, um, talking to leaders, and exploring the idea of civil rights, American civil rights, but also human rights. So this doesn't make him the best, you know, the, <laughs> he doesn't do so well for the Nation of Islam. They end up targeting him, actually. There's a few attempts on his life and his family. So eventually, unfortunately, he is shot and killed while he's giving a speech. And this is in front of a large crowd, and which includes his wife and daughter. So incredibly terrible event. That was is in 1965. That's a summary of the book. It's a big book. <laughs> There's a lot going on. 
But essentially, what's interesting? Let's let's um, niche down into a little bit more about the interesting points. First of all, I found was that in 1961, Malcolm, as a national representative of the Nation of Islam, agrees to and has a meeting with the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. And he meets with the wizards and they have, I think, a couple of hour long discussion. And in this discussion, they agree that the blacks and whites shouldn't be integrated. They should be separate. And they agree to pursue a separate tract of land or territory for black Americans. So that was quite interesting, but it gets better or gets worse. Um, they actually, the KKK asked Malcolm for information on Martin Luther King Jr. They, so they're actually targeting him at that stage and they want some inside information to help that happen. Malcolm was like, no, I don't think so. So that was a very interesting blow by blow account of that discussion in the book. Now, another interesting point was that how entrenched the FBI and the cops are in reporting on Malcolm. Uh, on his uh, on his happenings within the nation of Islam. It's really relentless and they're so involved that on the day of his death in which he is shot and killed, actually someone is undercover at that event. It's um, one of the police officers and he ends up giving CPR to Malcolm to try to save his life. He says, look, I'm just doing my duty at the end of the day. This is a human life. So really quite illuminating into how all of that works, the, the FBI and the cops going undercover. A third point I found interesting with this book was how Malcolm explains and Payne explains that the, the Nation of Islam did attract, the main worshippers were black Americans. And this was interesting because they argue or they say in the book that it was because this religion fostered black pride and empowerment. So I would never have known that from having not read the book. So I, I learnt quite a lot. But moving on to the final section of the show, what can we take away from this award-winning book as life story writers? Now, number one, I think Les shows us the way with how he interviews so many people, anyone who has known Malcolm or been around Malcolm, he tries to interview them. He does interview them. He talks to uh, living members of, of course, of Malcolm's family, the little family. He then tracks down classmates that knew him. Then there's, there's childhood friends who, who are on the street with him. Then there's cellmates, there's Nation of Islam, um, associates, then there's FBI agents, there's police and world leaders. So incredibly uh, important to see how Les or Payne uses these interviews and weaves them into the story. A second thing that he does really well is how he inserts reasoned commentary or comment into his writing and also reflective opinion. Now, this is clear. He, he clearly says it's his opinion, like he's giving him ideas, but it's also subtle, like it's not preachy or too much. He, he does do a good balance there. And I think it's really helpful for the reader because he's so close to it, he's learned a lot and he's kind of translating a little bit about what happened for us as the reader. Now, the last point I wanted to touch on was that this was a joint project. And this is something you can consider too for your own project is enlisting a family member's help. And in this case, uh, Les enlisted his daughter, Tamara. And I think having her research skills really did help give the book more detail, more depth. And ultimately, with Les's untimely death, and she helped finish this book. You never know what life's going to throw at you. And if you have a joint person or a joint project, then there's a possibility that, yep, people can help you if you're delayed or as the inevitably happened here, unfortunately, Les passed away. So heroic effort by Tamara to finish this work. So that's pretty much an award-winning book by Les Payne, his daughter Tamara Payne, put out by W.W. W. Norton and Company. And just to recap, we've talked about what the book is about, some interesting points that you can learn from reading the book, and also some lessons you can take away for your own life story writing. 
And as a bit of inspiration, I encourage you to read this book, almost to channel the pain's heroic dedication to publish this life story against these, they had some real difficulties there towards the end to get it published. So try and channel some of that. Now, if you'd like to read more about this, um, you go to my website, you go to foreveryoungautobiographies.com slash the dead are arising. You can see uh, covers of the book, there's pictures of Les and Tamara, and there's some quotes from the book and some resources that might help you for specific points for your own life story writing. So please head over there, take a look, and leave a comment, or you can do so here on this platform. Have you got a book that you would be interested in me to re in reviewing? Please let me know, leave me a comment. It's always great to share great life story reads. Now, earlier I mentioned the Structure Success Video Training. If you'd like to get your hands on that, you need to go to the website as well. Go to foreveryoungautobiographies.com slash structure success sign up. All you do is put your name in, your email, hit OK, and I will send you the link to that video training, which essentially is just me going through some exercises with you to come up with some key memories for your life, some key events, and then we arrange those into a rough chapter outline so you have a really good roadmap to get writing. I will be back again really soon with another topic, and I'd be so thankful if you could follow, subscribe, and like the show. And until then, happy writing.